Hi, this is Steffi from Steffi's Beads and Bobbles, and I have kind of a fun project to show you. I did some weird colors here, so forgive me, but I'm going to do a traditional right now. This one's already sold. One of my dear friends wants this one and another pink one. But I took that ornament shape that I did another video on, and I decided I love to stack sequins, so I decided I'd do one that was all stack sequins. And for the top of this one, I just did seed beads, on the one I'm going to show you today, I'm doing bugle beads. But if you can see, I took anywhere from two to as many as five sequins and just stacked them up on top of each other. And I used snowflakes and flowers. And then I did a couple in yellow. Again, I don't know really why. But if you notice, no two are alike. I used big flowers, little flowers, some ruffled ones reindeers, leaves, trees, a little bit of everything on here. This one I did in red, white, and blue, which is kind of different. And I used a lot of stars, and I did a tree and a reindeer. And this one's got mostly round with a few extra things. So this is one of those projects. If you have a bag of mixed up sequins in different sizes and shapes, maybe something like this, that's just all kinds of beautiful sequins. That's a piece of felt. I mean, all the different shapes and sizes. You just you put them on a plate like this and just have a blast. Now, a lot of these shapes, the Santas, the trees, I got from Cartwrights. Now, let me see. I have a bag here I bought from them. And it's Cartwright. I don't know if you can see that. Cartwright.com. It's C-C-A-R-T-W-R-I-G-H-T. Now, I'm just a customer. I don't get any kickbacks for sending you. Wish I did, but I've spent hundreds of dollars with them for years. Um, I was buying from them when they first started, and they didn't have these nice slick packages. They just hand put them in packages with little cardboard tops. And now their stuff comes really nice in these little bags. They send, send sell excuse me a bag of holiday mix and in that I got a lot of the trees, the, the Santas, I think there were some angels and different colors and shapes and that's what I'm using for a lot of this. Now if you want you can sit down and stack some up and get them ready. I normally don't. I just this is a fly by the wing of my pants type of thing and I started one to show you here and I started the top to show you how I did that and then I'm just layering them in. I want to show you the cookie cutter I used for this. This is a cookie cutter that my grandfather made for my grandma out of a can. And here's the other one he made. That's back when cans still had writing on them and weren't paper. And he made her this bell which I used for this one. And he made her this ornament, which I think I need to tweak it because it's not quite as round as it used to be, I think. But these are, they have to be over 80 years old. My grandma died at 94 and she's been gone 10 years. Um, they're very old. And I love them. They're two of my most prized possessions. So anyway, I was going to show you how to do this. I won't do a whole ornament, but just kind of show you what to do. And basically, you're going to take and stack ornaments, or sequins. And basically what you do is come up, you're going to knot the thread, come up, and then when I start, I come up, I go back through, and I come back up to secure the thread. And I've showed you that on all of them, so I'll skip that this one time. Then you're going to pick, um, and this is a nice bright red, whoops, I just threw it bright red Wheel of Fortune that came in that mix from Cartwrights. And you never know what you're going to get. Each one's a little different. Now I try to get it as close as I can to the other sequins on there. And don't worry because when you secure it that's what will hold it in place. Then you can just pick like here's a pretty green I can put on top of that and that'll show the little lacy edge on there. See? And then you can go and find another one you like. It could be any color. You could do anything. You could pick a red, 
a gold, here's a silver. I'm mixing gold and silver. You can do separate if you prefer, but I'm kind of mixing them. To me, gold and silver are both Christmassy. And if you notice, sometimes I'll do sequins that are just barely smaller than each other. Now here's another red, and then I'll just grab a seed bead. And you can use a mix of colors of seed beads too. And I'm kind of doing it. This is kind of a pearl. Now, probably not real swift doing a red sequin on a red piece of felt, but that's okay. Now on these big stacks, I like to go in the back and kind of secure them with an extra loop like this. Now another thing you're going to notice on the back of these, you're going to have big leaps. It's not like sewing on individual sequins. You're going to jump around quite a bit because they take up a lot more room. Now whenever you have a couple little tiny spots, you can just throw in a, a seed bead or like a little pearl like this. Any size pearl. I have one of these buckets that were that I kind of inherited through a friend that was his grandmother's. And there's a dump, dump bunch of pearls and some little beads. This is to make ornaments. But I've got tons of those little bitty pearls in all different sizes. And you can use those seed beads. I even use bugle beads. So when you have a little spot like that, you can grab, uh, say, a little tiny gold bead like this. And, oh, I already have a pearl on there, but that's, that's okay. You could even do both if you wanted, like that or like that. But you probably just want to do one. Um, and you just can pick up whichever one you want. I tend to go with a smaller bead and just kind of go in there and go into the corner and that'll tuck the bead in right into that little spot. And then you can go out further if you're going to use a big bead or a big sequin or you can go closer if you're going to do a smaller. So I tend to just kind of jump out there and then just pick, pick what I want to do. Now here's a white. Now when you go with white you can do pretty much anything. You can, and you don't have to stack a ton of them like I did. You can do just two. Like here's a white, and let's do a gold on top. And there's just two. Now, if you wanted to, you could out actually do a little red on top of that. It's very addictive. You'll find you don't want to stop. Then grab a seed bead, and I just hold, I just hold the seed bead sometimes on the needle like this so that it makes it easier because you do not want that seed bead coming through. And see, it just gives it a really neat look. And when you mix and match with the different, now this you have to be a little more careful because you're not going to cover the entire surface. So you want to keep that knot underneath. And like, let's say in here, I can't really fit a, anything, so I'll do a bugle bead. Let's see, a, let me find a green bugle bead. I haven't done one of those. And take a green. Now that's not real reflective, but it's kind of pretty. It's a very old one. And you just pull it through. And that's how you can fill in. I did a lot of that on these. Adding the bugle beads and seed beads. And here I even did little tiny. Like if I didn't have much room, I'd put a small sequin with an even tinier one. Maybe a five with a four and then a seed bead. This one you can see I did one two, three, four, five, six sequins with a little tiny seed bead. And this one's like three or four sequins. So it's really up to you. You can just have so much fun and use all those random sequins you have. And as you see, they don't have to be Christmas colors. You can do patriotic, you can do the golds. For some bizarre reason, I got obsessed with yellow, blue, and white, and gold. I don't know why. I'm not really that into yellow, but I just thought it was pretty and made a whole bunch of them. So, anyway, I'm going to show you now how to stitch them together. But this this is how you do it. You just fill it in. And, oh, i got a spider on here. Look at that. I made this little spider out of a piece of um, confetti. I used a tiny hole punch and put a hole in him. But I'm not going to put him on an ornament. He must have fallen off another project. But anyway, so there's no right or wrong. It's just basically filling it in. And then you can add in stuff like the angel. You can even pick a centerpiece if you want to put something in particular in the middle. And then fill in around it. 
I prefer the ones with a hole at the top and the bottom. Some of them, like this little bell, only have a top hole. And they can move around a little bit, so you kind of want to use those in places where they can't move much. There's stars you can use. They have a hole in the center. And these little pinwheel things, those are nice. And like I said, I believe that was in that mix I bought. Another thing that was in that mix, but I'm saving it for another project for you, were these gorgeous flowers. But there's a specific project I'm doing for you that I use these in, and they were in that mix. I think it's under $2, like $1.75 for a pretty good size bag. Um, it was probably this size of a bag. Um, this is their mini snowfall and snowflake mix. They've got several different snowflakes. They've got big ones, little ones, mixes of all different kinds. And I've got all of them. And I love using them. So anyway, let me show you how to stitch it together. I'm just going to borrow this thread. And I take and I tie a big knot, which I'm going to do off camera. I'll show, just leave a couple of these for you to look at while I tie the knot. Now you might notice that there's another edging on one of these, or a couple of these. But don't pay attention to that right now. I'm going to teach you that edging in another video. This has got too many moving parts. I don't want to throw too much at you. So I'm just going to do my normal edge on this one. And that's this triangle edge. So I'm going to show you how to sew it together. It's so easy. Pick what you want. Now on this one, I would use the white because I've used so much white in this, in this piece. So I would take some of the white, then you match it up. Now on some of these where they look the same from both directions, see where the ink is where you stamped it. Now they have to be facing the same direction. Then you know it's matched up perfect. And they're oftentimes when you cut them out by hand, they're not going to match perfectly like that. But it's okay. As you sew it together, that'll disappear. But you come up like that from the middle. Come up from the middle. And then you're going to make a loop like this. And that'll secure it. Now you're going to pick up three beads. whatever color you want to do. Come up right next to that circle and you're going to get a little loop, little three little beads. Now to make the triangle you're going to push it to the side and go for the last one. And you're going to pull up through that last bead. Now don't worry that that's twisted because when you put the last stitch in here you'll fix that. After that you're only going to add two beads. You're going to go pretty close and you're just going to keep doing that all the way around. I'm standing over the camera so these beads are very far from me. That's why I'm having a little trouble. And if you want the, the thread to blend in, use the same color thread as your ornament. Now I purposely chose white today because I find that I because I have so many threads, I use them, but it's not really fair to those of you that only have white thread. So I figured the next few videos I'd use white thread so you could see how your project would look. But you can go on Amazon, eBay, Etsy, just online in general and look up beading threads. And you can find any color you could possibly want. But you're just going to keep doing this all the way around until you get to the other side. And I've got one there. It just needs a couple stitches and it's done. Okay. Now remember I told you that one was going to be twisted. See how it's twisted. That's the first stitch. So I turn it around so it's touching the last stitch. Then you just pick up a bead and you're going to go through that first bead into the back and that'll make your little triangle. See? Then I just tie it. I just go through, go through and do little circles like this. Over and over. You can loop it if you want. I really don't. I just tend to do this. And then I'll go the other direction a few times. Just making sure it doesn't catch on the beads. 
and then I'll go back the other way. And as I tell you every video, if you really feel better, just put a dab of glue on it. You can put any kind of glue on there. Now since this is so close to the top, I'm just going to show you real quick. Now normally I'd cut that, but well, I'll just cut it to show you the right way. This is to do your loop. You're just going to do the same thing. You're going to tie a knot. Now this is a little different because uh, you might not have a sequin right under the front. So it's a good idea maybe to uh, make sure that the top has a good cover on it so that when you do this you have a way to kind of hide this knot. If not, just go up to the back because if the knot's on the back it really doesn't matter because no one's going to see it. So if you don't have, let's see if you notice I put a sequin under there. But you can either come up through the front or if you just want, come up through the back. And what I do is I find the center as best I can. And I come up through the felt and into the sequin on the side of the triangle. And then I'm going to load on a bunch of seed beads. I usually do six inches, which makes a three inch loop. And once you get, I'm just going to show you what it looks like once I start putting the seed beads on. But I'm not going to waste your time doing the whole loop. Once you have your six inches, you're going to go on the other side of the triangle or as far over as you want. Go back, not always sometimes, sometimes you want to go over a couple. And you're going to go back through the one on the, on the end, not the upper one, the one on the bottom. Go back through like that and you're going to do that knot I just showed you when I finished it. And then you'll have your loop. They, these are fun. These are a lot of fun. You can really play with these and do all kinds of decoration and no two are the same. And if you like the round, you can do a whole one with the round. I did add a couple things, but these two are mostly round. Couple, I put little stars, little tiny single sequins on this one, a leaf, there's just no end to the combinations you can do. Now here, this is one of my first ones. I didn't fill it in as much. I may go back later and do that. Come up underneath the sequin, tie a knot, and then go underneath and come up. Um, I, that, I wouldn't do that now. If you notice, they're pretty full. And the bugle beads come in real handy. I did that on all of them. I put pearls, I put bugle beads. Sometimes I'd use seed beads. Just anything that I felt like doing. It's just a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And you have some sequins that you can play with. But if not, check out Cartwrights. Or check out your craft store. Because they often sell a big old bag of all kinds of sequins. For maybe 10 bucks, And with your discount coupon, maybe pay 5 or 6 And then you'll have a whole tub of all different sizes and shapes. But most of us have that weird bag of mixed up sequins that our grandma had or our mom had or we found at a yard sale or we just made ourselves from lots of projects. That's what this is perfect for. You don't have to have the shaped ones. You really don't. It would just look more like this without those couple shapes. So you don't have to have the shapes. You can just do all round sequins. And I think they're beautiful and they're fun and each one's unique. And you don't have to use a bell or, you can use anything. I've used a star, I used a bell, and now here is a round one, and there was a round one. So you could do this on a reindeer, you could do it on a sleigh, on a mitten, on a stocking. You could do anything. There's no right or wrong. So anyway, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate it. And I will be back soon with another video. I've got a lot planned. And I found my polar bear, so I will be doing that very soon. I've got to stamp him out and figure out how I'm going to do him. But I found him, and I got him in a safe place. So I'll be back soon. Thanks again. Bye.